What a blessing it is this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. It's been real. It's been so good this morning, the songs and everything that everyone said. What a blessing. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in here today. Devin, it touched my heart, what you said. Um, So good. I don't even know what to say, I mean, and what everyone said. Um, what a blessing, and I just thank you, Sister Richardson. It's been, I don't know when the last time I was here was. Um, it's been a few years, I believe. It's been a couple years since y'all come to the house, but it's so good to see you, brother. I love you. I'll just try to speak my heart here this morning. I, God, give me a word. Um. But I just, I'm going to be real this morning. I'm just going to pour my heart out to you. Um, Brother Myers, you're my best friend, brother. Um, I love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength. Sister Myers, the same goes to you. I love you so much. Um, I came... I've been gone for 10 years from here, but when I was here, uh, Brother Myers, he took me under his wing. Um, I've learned so much from him. He'll always I'll, he'll always be my pastor all the days, one of my pastors all the days of my life, and I've never known another man that was more anointed and could preach the word like you can, brother. He hates when I say this, because I've told him that so many times, but that's because he's humble. He's a man that, of many, many talents, I've watched him do so much here at the church with his hands. He's a man that can do so much. God's given him such a talent with his hands, such a talent um, to speak an anointing that doesn't come just from not doing anything, but the anointing comes from being on your knees. The anointing comes from going through through things in life that he's had to go through. Many trials, I've seen him go through many things. We talk often, but I've seen him and Sister Myers, where like Devin said, great words. Um, I couldn't have said it any better, what you said. Where a great man of God comes, there's a great woman of God right there with him. And that's Sister Myers. Amen. Thank you, Sister, for being there for everything. She's there. She's the, the rock, the pillar. She's, she's God is, but she's there um right behind Brother Myers um, with every step that he takes, and he feels the same. That's why God says that leave your mother and father and cling to your wife. You become one, and they are as one in God. I've seen them devote. They have devoted their whole life. How long have you been here at Gray Street, Brother Myers? Thirteen years. So I come shortly after you were started pastoring here, and uh, I was his associate pastor for a couple years here. And, but I've seen him work so diligently. I, I talk to him frequently, and I know the burden that he carries. God handpicked him for such a time as this to minister to you. He's the shepherd of this church. And he does care so much. He cares with all his heart, with all his mind, with all his soul and strength. And uh, so does Sister Myers. And I love you all this morning. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be here. And I've just got a a word this morning. It's not going to be long. But uh, if you would, turn to Acts chapter 3 this morning. Thank you, Devin, for inviting me. To come it was such an honor. I'm a, I watched Sister Wendy yesterday, and what an anointed woman of God. 
She said, I don't know who's coming tomorrow. It's probably someone a lot more intelligent than me. And I'm thinking, sorry, sister, but it's not. Surprise. <laughs> Amen. But, hey, God is with us, isn't he? Amen. But um, I enjoyed that message that she had yesterday. What a word to Brother and Sister Myers and to all of you. That without my glasses up there, it was a God give me strength to see there. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, I'm just going to read through uh, 1 through 12 this morning. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. It was the time of prayer. They were, um, Everybody knows that that's the time to go, don't we? The house of God is a house of prayer. That's why we've got the altars in here. But they were going, being about the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John, about to go into the temple, asked an alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. He looked at the man and he said, Peter looked at him and he said, look on us. And the man looked up there and I'm sure he was expecting to get some money in return here. But Peter, but he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something of them is what it says. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. He says, but such as I have, give I thee. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Say, so grab the man. And he said, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He says, immediately. And he leaping up stood and he walked and he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping. And praising God. Praise the Lord this morning. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the gate, at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which, which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed, healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? It says, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers have glorified his son, Jesus. He says, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But then it just skip on down to, to verse, um, well, we'll just keep reading there. But ye denied the Holy One and just and desired a murder to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Help me pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray this morning, God, for you to give me an encouraging word, God. God, for you to take over, God, and you say what you would want to say this morning through me, God, who is not worthy to even get up and preach this morning, only by your grace, God, and by your mercy, God. But, God, I ask you to, to give me the words for pastor and his wife, God, for the congregation today. God, I ask you to, to anoint me, God, 
Father God, I ask you, God, to ever to open our hearts to receive your word this morning. God, and when we leave this place this morning, God, I ask that we not be the same as when we walked in today. God, I praise you. I give you all the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. But verse 6 is what I want to focus on this morning. It says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let me tell you what, Jesus ain't changed. He's the same today as he was yesterday. He's the same God today. He's the same God that Peter knew when he said, rise up and walk. God's still a healer. He's still a deliverer this morning. He still sets free from bondage today. And he can take you by the hand this morning. And in one second, he can change your life. In one second, he can give you, he can make you rise up and walk. I'm not accepting, you know, I know God's got, his time, and in, in, in his way of doing things. You know, we can say, we, we can say what we want to, and we can, try to, we can try to make things go faster, but ultimately, God, he has a plan. And his plan, he's got you this morning right in the palm of his hand. Brother, I know that God's got a plan, but I know I'm believing this morning for healing for you. I'm believing this morning, healing for Sister Myers. I believe that God's going to give my brother strength this morning. I stand on his promises. I stand on the word of God. Now, I don't know how God's going to do that. I don't know in what time God's going to do that. But I believe and I stand on the word. And I believe he's going to do it this morning. Now, God, our ways isn't his ways. We don't know you know, how God's going to do things. But I know that God created heaven and earth. I know that he gives us the breath, and he's the reason we get out of bed every morning. I know that God does things in his time and his way, but I know that I've got to stand, and I know that I have to believe by faith in him this morning. You know, when we're going through something in our life, it's, You know, it's easy for someone to come from the outside and say, why ain't you got faith, brother? Why ain't you standing on the promises of God? It's not that we're not. But when you're going through, how easy it is to go through something in life and someone on the outside to look in and and just judge it and judge how you're supposed to act or how you're supposed to think or or how now's the time that we have to stand for our sister and our brother. We've got to stand with faith for them and with them and believe in it. It says where one or two are gathered, there he is in the midst of it all. There is God is in the midst of it all this morning. I thought about the pastor and in the burden that he carries. And he has always carried since the day that I met him. And that is for you. God handpicked my brother and sister to come to Gray Street Church of God. And he came with a burden. Even before he came here, God gave him a burden inside for you. What is that burden? That you give God everything. That's what he wants. I'm preaching to you this morning. I'm just, it's a simple message, the way to your pastor's heart. What is the way to your pastor's heart this morning? Well, the way to your pastor's heart, brother and sister of Meyer's heart this morning, is that you give God everything within you this morning. That you give God everything. Everything that you love, the the Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, in the world that we live in today, it is nothing but division. See, God brings unity together. The devil tries to divide. The devil comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy our lives 
But God came to what? Give us life and life more abundantly in him. Well, the pastor's burden this morning is that you give God everything. That's what he wants. That's the way to your pastor's heart this morning is that you give everything to God. Time, your talent, and your treasure this morning. Peter and John, as they walked into the gate, beautiful, they walk into that temple. That man looked upon him, and Peter said, Look into my eyes. And when he looked into it, he said, Silver and gold I have none, but what I have I give thee this morning. He reached down there and he grabbed me and said, Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter didn't have silver. He didn't have gold. This world's got nothing to offer. But God's got everything to offer this morning. He's got more, more than money, more than mansions. He's got mansions ahead for all of us. But on this earth, he's got something spiritual that's eternal for you. Brother, when you, when you showed me that this morning, that note that you had, I knew that it was confirmed what I was preaching this morning. But what do you have to give is my question to you. I thought about the pastor and Sister Myers and the things that he has had to give. Every time I, I listen to him or I've seen him preach, he has a word from God. I know how hard he's worked outside of the church to support his family, but he still in them nights, in them evenings that he come home, on Wednesdays or Thursdays when you have church in midweek, and I know you're going to have to do some different things here in the future for a while, but I know that he's, he still gets a hold of God. Sister Myers right there with him. He couldn't do it without her. There is one. She has stood behind him and supported him through everything. And him with her the same. They love each other. They support each other. But I watched him so many times when I was at this church. Kneel down here at this altar right there where I was praying this morning. And I watched him even before he ever got here. I'm sure he was in prayer. But that anointing that comes, comes through that. But tired or whatever, he would still get a message. Not just come in and, and preach any old thing out in the Word of God, but what God wanted him to preach. What did He's always pre asked God, Lord, what do you want me to say? Because that's the burden. He wants to come in with the message of the hour. He doesn't, he doesn't take it lightly. He's never took it lightly. They don't take this lightly. This is their life. Their life is to pour out everything that they can pour out into your lives so that you make it to heaven. That's the way, that's what they want for you. And if you're going to do anything for them, let me tell you, if you're going to be able to give your time, if you're going to give your talents, and you're going to give your treasures, that's the way to give God everything that you have within you is the way to his heart. It's the way to her heart. It's to love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And I thought about the time that, that I've seen him, what time I've seen him give to God. I come down here and work and, and fix up the church and still go to work and still go home and, and, and pray. And, and I know it's hard for me to get a hold of God. I, I struggled all day yesterday and up into the wee hours of the morning trying to get a hold of God. What do you want me to say? And that's just every now and then. I'm not an evangelist, but that's every now and then. He does it day after day and been doing it for years. That's a burden because he wants to know from God what he needs to say. And, and he does it so well, not because of who he is, but because of what God is in him. That's what it's all about. John said, Peter said, Peter and John said, silver and gold I have none, but what I give, I give, I give to thee. But he goes on to say, 
that but God, it says in verse 11 and 12, not by their own power or holiness, but God's. They were still where they needed to be because of their commitments, though, to Jesus Christ. And it wasn't by their holiness. It wasn't by the, the works that they'd done, but it was because they were going to the temple to pray. That man was there where he was supposed to be. God knew before he ever got there that what was going on. He had it ordained from the beginning of time that Peter and John would be walking to the temple, but they still had a choice, didn't they? They were still needed to be going to that temple. We have a choice. We have a choice whether we're going to give God everything and every part and be. God don't want a lukewarm Christian. He don't want you to be lukewarm this morning. He wants you to have a full commitment to him. He wants you to give everything within you to him. This We're just passing through this place. We're pilgrims. We're strangers in this land. Life is so short, but heaven is going to be forever. Praise God. And that's the ultimate goal is to make it to heaven, but to, to, to bring everybody with you if you can. But the only way that, that you can get to the pastor's heart this morning is through a commitment to God. If you'll give God your everything, if you give him your all, your heart, your mind, your soul and strength, listen, you will sacrifice to God what's important to you, period. We do what's important to us this morning. It's important to me that I come here. It was important to me that I, I, I wanted to say something to encourage y'all. I wanted to say something to encourage this congregation this morning. It's important to me. What do you have to give this morning? That's my question to you. I'm going to preach to you for a minute, but it's still about the pastor this morning. But what do you have to give? Your time, your talents, and your treasure. You may say, Brother Kim, well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't have much money. Well, Peter and John didn't have silver or gold, but they had something else, didn't they? They had the power of an almighty God. We can have a power of an almighty God this morning when we are committed to him in every facet of our life. You may give, if you're not committed to God, you may be able to give some time, some talent, and some treasure this morning. But you can't give fully what God is, is wanting you to give. Now, if we can all come to a place to where we can give God everything, then God can use us. See, we're arms and legs and feet and, and, and heads, and I'll just be the little old toe. That's, hey, just let me be a part of God. It doesn't matter if I'm up here or I'm down here, let me tell you. It doesn't matter if I clean that bathroom. It doesn't matter if I mow that grass. It doesn't matter if I get up here and preach or sing. I'll do whatever God will allow me to do. That's the heart that God wants us to have. But God wants to mold you and shape you. God don't make any mistakes. He's got a reason for everything he does. God doesn't make mistakes. God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He said, I'll never see you begging bread this morning. He'll make a way where there seems no way. It might not be in our time. It might not be in our way. But he'll make a way in his time and in his way if we just hold on. We just got to hold on to Jesus this morning. We got to hold on to faith. We, I'm going to believe no matter what, I'm going to stand on his promises this morning. He says, I heal all thy diseases. All thy diseases this morning. I believe in God this morning. I'm going to read, God give me this, this morning. just want to read a little bit of Revelations chapter 2. And I'm going to come to an end soon. Revelations chapter 2. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, 
We know who that is. That's Jesus, praise God. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That's the church this morning. That's the church in whole this morning. <clears throat> God said, I know that works. I can't hide nothing from God, Brother Myers. I can hide it from you. I can hide it from you, Brother Devin. I can, I can put on my suit this morning. I could grab my guitar and I could come in this church and, and I could act one way and I could hide anything from you I wanted to hide from you. But I can't hide anything from God. He knows my works. He knows what I do. He knows what I do in my secret time. What do you have to give God? What do you have to give thee this morning, I ask you? God knows our works. I'm talking, I'm preaching to me this morning. I always put me there because every message that I ever prepare and every message that God ever gives me is to me first. It hits me head on, right between the eyes every time. It says, I know thy works and thy labor. He's preaching to the church this morning, to the whole church. How many knows the whole church ain't where they need to be this morning? The whole church is not where they need to be this morning. If you look within yourself, have you given everything to God? Is there nothing more that you could give to God? There's a lot more I can give to God this morning. There's a lot more that I can give to God this morning. It says, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. He's saying, I know your labor. I know what you've done. And he's commending this. He's not downing them here. And he says, I know that thou, thou canst, canst bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. He's saying that, that I know that people are coming in here. And Paul had already told them that there'll be people coming in deceiving them as, as wolves. And they, they've spotted them, and they were doing the right thing here. And he says, and hast borne which meaning has persevered, he's saying. I, I've seen that you're per, you've never got weary in your well-doing. you persevered for God, he's saying. And, and I see that for not, for, and you've had patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou have left thy first love. Still, God commended them for the things that they were doing right. See, people still, some people still come to church, but it's became a routine. It's became just a thing they've been doing for many years. Somewhere along the way, they've lost that fire, that, that, that desire that they once had for God. God said to love him with all your heart, your mind, and soul. That's the first greatest commandment this morning. And the second is to love thy neighbor as yourself. If you can't do the first one, you're not going to do the second one. To do that is the way to your pastor's heart this morning. So what do we do, Brother Ken? I know I've, I have fell in that trap. I've, I'm just going through the motions this morning. Brother Richardson, I've just, you know, I've, I'm still coming to church, but I, I, man, I used to have such a desire more than I have. I used to have such a desire to read the Word of God. It meant so much to me. Now I've gotten so busy. See, the enemy will make get you just as busy and get you just as busy as he can get you. Look what he's, look what he's done. To people, I think God's trying to wake people up with what's been going on for two years. But the church is still dead. You think the church would be full? Every church would be full this morning with what's going on. You think people would run to church? It don't matter if I've got a ride or not. I'm going to get to the house of God somehow. That's how it was when we first got saved, wasn't it? When you first give your life to God, did you not have a passion? Man, I remember when I first gave my life to God, and I know I'm not talking about the excitement all, but boy, I was excited. They used to call me Buzzsaw. 
because I was running around like a chainsaw. Man, I, I would get on the phone and I would call everyone I knew and I'd say, man, you better give your life to Jesus. He's coming soon. You better give your life to I, I had a, a hunger. I had, a, I had such a, a burden because I knew God could come back at any time. And I was trying to let people know that's what Brother Myers has. That's what Sister Myers has. That's what they want you to have. That's the way to a pastor's heart this morning. Somehow, somewhere along the way, I've been going through the motions. What do I do, Brother Richardson? Well, God tells you what to do in verse 5. He says, remember. Man, remember. God's used that so many times in the Word of God. Remember. He told Timothy, Remember your grandma, how you was raised, your mama. He said, stir up that gift that I give thee. He tells them here, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Do the first works, or else I will come unto thee and remove thy candlestick. I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. It says, remember from whence you are fallen. You remember where you were? I remember when I give my life to the Lord. I remember the feeling when I got up from my bedside that day. I was changed. What faith, what faith you had right when you, when you give your life to Jesus and you ask Jesus, someone that you've never seen, Sister Myers, I never laid eyes on Jesus. I'd read about him in the word of God. But I knelt down at that altar and the man that I read about, I knew he was real. I was raised that way. I was raised in church and when you're raised, the Bible says when you get older, you will not depart from that. that you, and I stand by that word, too, for Miranda and Justin and everybody who's not here this morning. I stand on that word, too. They're going to be back in the house of God. Amen. And all of your children, all of your loved ones that you've been praying for, you stand on the word of God this morning. But remember, I remember when I got up from that bed and I asked Jesus, I said, Jesus, I'm tired of living the way that I'm living. I'm, I've had, like Sister Miranda said this morning, there's a time where we got to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm not going to live this way anymore. But I remember when I asked God and I got up and I was changed. I was a changed person. The grass was greener. The birds were singing, and I knew they were praising God. And I'm looking out at the pine trees, and I'm thinking they've got all their branches raised. I said, look at there. They're, they're praising God. I'm listening at the frogs and the crickets. I'm saying, they're praising God. And they are. God had opened my eyes. He took the blinders off. I was once blind, but now I see Praise God. The enemy comes, and he tries to blind you again. After you've given your life and he's changed your life, he tries to blind you again. But we got to once again come. He says, repent. 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 That means turn from it. Turn from those ways. The enemy don't want you here this morning. He knew that this day would be, he knew exactly it was ordained from the beginning of time. If you ain't been coming to church, you ain't been living the life that you know that you need to live, don't you leave here today the same way. You give it back to God this morning. Because if I give my life fully to God this morning, and I do everything for him. I give him all my heart, my mind, my soul, and my strength. Then I have something to give. I have something to give you, brother. Fully. The way God intended it to be. If somebody had come up to the piano this morning, I'm, I'm about to get ready to finish. 
I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what situation, but God knows your works. I know the situation that my brother and sister are going through. They need you this morning. And if you'll give your life to the Lord, the way, if you'll remember how it once was. See, God said that we got to take the old paths again. See, the church has made it into be something that don't need to be. They've tried to fancy things up. With, and I'm not saying to do different things isn't, isn't good. That's fine. But the holiness, the, the anointing is the anointing of God. The power of God is the power of God. The altar is the altar of God. God says some things come by no, just, some things only come by fasting and prayer. That's the basics of God: fasting, praying, believing, and getting things right, making a mind up that you're going to serve Him. You're not going to turn to the left and you're not going to turn to the right but you're going to give God everything this morning brother Myers I'm sorry that I haven't been there for you like I should have been in the last few years and I know he's humble he don't feel that way but we can't let other things it doesn't we should not let life get us so busy that we can't be there for each other that we can't be there for God. If we let anything get in our way, the enemy that is, in the way of being where God wants us to be, we're too busy. There's nothing. That's everything that we have in this earth is temporary. Money, your job, yeah, I know we've got to work. I know we've got to, to make a living. That's our livelihood. But if it comes, if it hinders you from being where God wants you to be, that, that job that's paying more money, that don't really matter. Things don't matter that are temporary if they get in the way with what's eternal this morning. Silver and gold have I none. I don't have a lot of things. I don't have a lot of material, but Brother Myers, what I do have, I'll give to thee. I'll give you prayer. I'll give you fasting this morning. I'll give you my heart, brother, because I'm going to give it to God, and if you give it to God, you're giving it to Him this morning. I ask you this morning, just to come down if you need to pray this morning because the best way that we can bring give the pastor the best gift that we can give the pastor is getting our life right before God not walking out of this place the same as we walked in this morning